Good morning guys, uh, this is CJ once again with another commented time-lapse uh, video. Um, well this one is actually fairly interesting because it's not uh, time-lapse but it is done in real time. I posted this uh, video not too long ago, uh, I would say about a month ago. Um, and I'm now re-reviewing it <laughs> with my own commentary and talk real quick. Um, yeah, I'm re-reviewing it with my own commentary and showing you the video while I talk about it. Uh, okay, um, so I guess I'm going to start out with what my idea, uh, where my idea came from on, for this video or for this particular sketch. Um, I have been watching a lot of Kim Jong-ji videos lately and uh, if you guys are not familiar with Kim Jong-ji he's um, an amazing amazing artist um, and he goes by Super Annie on YouTube uh, it's always interesting to watch the videos he posted uh, or the videos he posts very very good artist um, so yeah I've been watching him a lot and you know, I wanted to take a stab at doing a pen sketch, um, and so really, this is what this video is all about. I mean, I've been doing a lot of pen sketches. I, I did one for this uh, channel uh, about four or five months ago, and I wanted to post another one essentially that's a little bit more developed. Um, so yeah, this is what this video is. Now, you guys might be wondering. Um, why I have a pencil in the video right now uh, if the whole point was to do a pen sketch why exactly do I have a pencil on there well um, I the reason why I wanted to do a pencil was because um, I wanted to be I wanted everything contained in the camera's point of view because the camera's point of view or the camera right now my iPhone is uh, in a static in a static position, and I didn't want to move it. And so I basically just wanted to block out the shape, um, essentially, uh, just to kind of get a rough idea of where everything's gonna fall, essentially. Now, as for the details of the two cats that I'm about to draw, I it's all kind of fuzzy in my head. To be honest, though, I practiced twice. I practiced this illustration twice before attempting this video that I'm showing you right now. Uh, and the reason why was because I was uh, messing around with a lot of the lighting and a lot of the camera's position. Um, and in those three uh, illustrations, or all three illustrations actually all look different. <laughs> because even though I kind of sketched out the general shape and form of the cats and they're kind of their final position, their final pose, like even though all the pose and the position and the general shapes are all the same between all three, the actual details that I drew on the cast themselves uh, were actually very different. Um, so yeah, they're all uh, the same but then different. So I wish I had kept the other two. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think I threw the other two away and decided to just keep this third one. So yeah, now I don't have anything to show you guys as to what the other two would look like. But it's also a good thing because the other two wasn't as polished or as developed as this third one. So yeah. Uh, but going back to the conversation of King Jong Ji um, and whatnot. Um, if you guys are familiar with his drawings, uh, he does a lot of pen sketches. And he draws everything from his mind essentially. He goes just straight from his mind to paper, full details, everything. Um, and now a lot of people actually think that he doesn't use references. I um, this is that this is not true to a certain degree. Uh, I, I watched a video of him uh, being interviewed, and in that video he actually mentioned that yeah sure he drew a lot from his mind but he still uses references 
and essentially you know when you practice a lot and, and you draw a lot you get to a point where you have so much um, you have a strong visual library is what you know people would call it you know if people ask you to draw a person you could draw a person right off the top of your head without having to use references mainly because you've been drawing it so much that it's just become second nature you know it comes out of it it comes out of your head naturally now the thing that I wanted to mention and the specific thing that I kind of wanted to go over is the whole idea of references and drawing everything from memory um, you don't get to a point like Kim Jong Ji without using references and even he himself said that like the only reason why he got to a point where he's you know so good that he could draw something out of his head you know is because he practiced a lot and he used references a lot you know and so reference is a very important thing for artists it's a very important uh, practice to do essentially you know and the reason why I wanted to mention this is because I've been seeing a lot of artists you know kind of shy away from references essentially you know I, I would see them post an artwork and they would make a big deal about it <laughs> not or about they would make a big deal about not using references you know like the post would say something like here's my original OC my original character no references used and I kinda just scratch my head whenever I see that that sentence I'm like why are you bragging about no references used <laughs> like I don't get it you know um because for me personally I think references are very very important <laughs> it's a very important thing to do all the or to have all the time you know I mean you don't really hear Kim Jong Ji brag about no references used whenever he draws something out of the top of his head it's just because he knows that you know like references are important you know and so yeah I, I guess I wanted to mention this early on in the video because you know I, I don't understand why people kind of brag about no references used <laughs> because references are very important especially for your creative development even if you just even if you're not a pro even if you have no plans of being a pro if this is just a hobby for you then that's great you know that's awesome you have this hobby but you know always use references because it's important so yeah um, but anyways enough about that tidbit let's go um, talk about what's going on in the page right now and uh, what were the ideas that was kind of floating in my head um, when I was making this piece um, so again like I mentioned you know I've been influenced about with Kim Jong Ji and how he draw um, and how he kind of just uh, draws on the fly basically and I, I wanted to point out like when you start pulling off a technique like that typically what one does is that um, when you make a mark or you make a shape or you make an object or something you typically adjust everything else to what you did before uh, uh, I guess to kind of illustrate this idea if for example I'm drawing a human and I decided not to sketch out the shape of the human first like I did with this cat you know I sketch out the shape and let's pretend I didn't sketch out the shape of the cat um, what I would do is if I'm just drawing with a blank slate you know and I didn't sketch out the shape of the cat whatever shapes I lay down first in this case since I started out with the face let's pretend you know in this imaginary word world I'm drawing the face um, when I put down the face I will adjust the proportions of everything else in accordance to the shape of the face that I have put down already and so 
This is the reason why I created an initial shape in this drawing first because the first two trials that I did, I kept going out of the camera's view because, you know, I would start out with the head first and the shape of the head was too big or something and so eventually, you know, all I would capture in the camera's point of view was just, you know, the mama's head and the neck. I couldn't get to draw the leg out because, you know, I was adjusting to the size of her head, you know, and adjusting the proportion accordingly that I eventually ended up um, going out of bounds with the camera's view. And so that is kind of like how Kim Jong Ji does it, basically. You know, um, when you have like a huge canvas of paper like he does. You know, you basically just, you know, can draw whatever you want because, you know, however big or however small you start, everything kind of just dictates and kind of goes from that, essentially, you know, from that first shape that you make. I um, hope that explanation makes sense. Um, the reason why I wanted to mention that is, you know, because um so yeah the the reason why i wanted to mention that is because uh, I, I think people are kind of you know astounded by how kim jong ji does it and i kind of just wanted to say that you know it's not as difficult as most people think when when someone draws like the way Kim Jong Ji does it uh, I mean I know my drawing levels is definitely not <laughs> nowhere near his you know um, I, I still need a lot of work obviously but when I what I wanted to mention in this video is that you know drawing like the way Kim Jong Ji does it isn't really as difficult as you think as it is because um, so long as you have a good keen sense of proportion you know everything else that you do in the paper kind of adjusts itself you know if that makes sense because a lot of beginners you know they look at Kim Jong Ji's drawings and they'll see wow everything's proportional the humans are great the, you know they look realistic proportion wise you know and then the machines that or like the motorbikes because he does a lot of motorbikes the motorbikes that's right next to the human is like proportion wise you know, if a beginner was, for example, or for example, if a beginner was to draw like a similar drawing, what you will see in a beginner is that proportion wise, everything would be messed up. You know, like the bike is too small, or the person's head is too big, or the person's legs are too long, you know. Um, so that's the reason why, you know, they'd be confounded and. You know, a beginner would look at Kim Jong Ji and be like, "Wow, Kim Jong Ji is on another level," you know, because everything's proportion with him, or everything's proportional with all his drawings and all that stuff. And um, in all honesty, you know, it's really not that difficult. You know, I mean, you can get there if you just practice a lot, and and I think that's just what it all boils down to is just a lot of practice. You know. And I mean, I'm still nowhere near his level, um, and I already mentioned that, you know. But uh, at least I get I get a few things down, like the proportion and you know keeping things in check, you know. Even though I didn't really show a good example in this particular video, since I kind of sort of cheated, since I have a shape outline, um, I, I still kind of have that sense in a way, so. But yeah, wow, okay, I went off a lot about King Jong Ji. I really just wanted to talk about the sketch, but I got off on the whole drawing in his style and whatnot. Um, yeah, and using references, which, you know, I promote a lot. Please use references if you're a beginner artist. Use references, it will help you a lot. So, but um, yeah. So going back to the sketch and what we're seeing right now, um, someone mentioned that you know they really love the tribal designs. 
that I put into this robot cat uh, and uh, my inspiration for the tribal look for for the floral designs is from um, from Baroque architecture um, Oh yeah, and I wanted to mention how the video skipped there for a second. Sorry about that. I lost like two to three minutes of recording or something because I didn't realize that there was something wrong with my setup. But yeah, I lost quite a few uh, sketching there. But anyways, going back to the design. Um, Baroque architecture has influenced me lately. Um, there was this one time where I drew a sketch of a robot head and I put a bunch of Baroque design on top of this robot's head and it was just a quick sketch you know it wasn't very detailed whatnot but that one particular sketch captured my attention that I've kind of been trying to explore this whole motif of like a like a baroque robot um like the closest example i could give is the the kind of design that was present in juice x mankind divided that game um juice x in general was heavily heavily influenced with you know rococo design um so I've been kind of sort of experimenting with that kind of design in in my sketchbook um, and you actually see it in some of my portfolio um, uh, my illustration I'm okay to go has a lot of those elements in it and I, I guess uh, I think another illustration that I did another speed paint that I did uh, by the light of the moon actually has um, that Baroque kind of style uh, together with robots but yeah I've I've sort of been experimenting with that um, look and <laughs> I haven't really been successful in all honesty like every single one I've done so far hasn't been as good as that first one that I did um, and ironically enough when I developed that first one because you know that first one I did was just a sketch um, when I develop it, um, actually I didn't develop it. I guess I was wrong in that. I thought I did. Um, but I know I did like a pen outline on top of it. The pen outline looked okay, you know, but I can tell that there were like errors in it that if I was to like develop it farther, I know that it wasn't going to look good. It was only going to look as good as a sketch and that's just about it. But yeah, I, I've been trying to explore this whole Baroque robot design and so far I have not been successful in any of my attempts. I mean, every single sketch that I've done so far has all been functional and they look good and they look like they could exist in real life. But as for me liking the actual design, I haven't been so happy with it so far. You know, so every now and then I will explore the design motif again. Um, not as much, you know, but yeah. Uh, I've been exploring it um, and there is an artist in art station uh, Christoph Young Christoph Young I think is his uh, name um, he's a 2d artist and then there's a 3d artist named 1d Inc uh, I found him actually on YouTube um, for 1d Inc I've never found out what his name was like I tried to do a Google search for his name just now and that you know still I could not find his name so I have no idea what his real name is but anyways those two artists and I know I'm missing one too I'm thinking of another one just off the top of my head actually and I can't remember her name but anyways those three artists have done um, Baroque designs that look so amazing so I, I wanted to mention their names because you know if you're interested in looking at this baroque design that I'm talking about uh, those people um, uh, practice baroque design a lot uh, especially 1d ink he's really really good with um, with 3d modeling and sculpting uh, the baroque design 
and in all honesty I, I'm getting to the point that you know I, I'm beginning to realize that doing all this Baroque design would really be best if it's done in 3D rather than than just me sketching it out because you know when I sketch it out and when I paint it yeah it kind of looks realistic but it doesn't look nowhere near as good as I think it won't look nowhere near as good as if it was in 3D so at least I can view what it really should look like um, but yeah since I haven't explored it in 3D I, I don't really know but anyways um, enough about that those artists you do need to check out Christoph Young 1D Inc uh, and this girl whose name I cannot remember off the top of my head now sorry apologize I'll just uh, write her name down um, in the description below so yeah but anyways I've gone on to rambling again about other things and not talked about the art that is in front of us wow okay I do this a lot um, but this uh, video is about to wrap up so I guess um, let me just uh, wrap things up by saying that uh, So yeah, I just want to wrap things up by saying that this was a fun sketch to do um, in the vein of a King Jongji style. Uh, not quite his style obviously because I kind of sort of cheated uh, by doing that outline. Uh, but again, I have good reason to do the outline first. It was to contain everything within the camera. Um, but yeah, um, I decided not to finish it because I kind of like I kind of like the look of the loose loose looseness of it, or the unfinished look of it. Um, maybe someday I'll develop this even farther more, or even better, maybe I'll digitally sculpt it. Because uh, again, like I said, doing Baroque design, it, it seems like it would be so much better if it's done in 3D rather than just sketching it out in 2D. You know. Because at least in 3D, you can rotate around it and really appreciate Baroque design. So yeah. But yeah. Check out the artists I mentioned and check out Rococo architecture. Baroque architecture. Um, those are really good influences of mine. Uh, they've been influencing my artwork as of late. Thanks for watching folks, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, like, subscribe, good night.